Welcome to the PC Perspective Podcast. This is episode number 743, recorded live as compared to dead on October 4th, 2023, and a change of pace. I'm your roast, Mr. Coast. No, I'm Josh Walrath. Hi, Coast. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. Um, I'm Brett, and I've been replaced by five AI prompts and a very small shell script this evening. I'm Kent Burgess, and have <laughs> nothing witty to add to that. I'm Sebastian Peak, and uh, since I'm suffering from some kind of asthma attack, uh, I'm going to let Josh host the show tonight. And I'll just keep quiet as much as possible. And, you know, I kind of messed that up because I was supposed to say I'm, I'm Mr. Pork, your roast. Welcome to PC Perspective go. Island. There you go. But no, no, I had to uh, I had to think faster than my mouth actually moved or something like that. Mm-hmm. And what's Patreon land looking like these days? Brad? Speaking of Patreon, we would adore it. If somehow you found your way over to the PC Perspective Patreon page at patreon.com slash PCPer, and if you could find your way to throw a couple of nickels, not those wooden ones, because we can't redeem those, although we do have a nice pile of wooden nickels, throw a dollar or two in the bucket. We would greatly appreciate that because that keeps this whole thing spinning around and the lights on, mostly the lights on, the the LEDs on, the RGB spinning. But we've got a special thank you for Ed the Mac guy. And I feel like I've brought Ed in personally here. Ed is here. I don't know. Not, maybe he's got the wrong show. Maybe he's just enjoying the camaraderie here that we've got going, but we appreciate you, Ed. Thank you very much. It's, it's kind of throwing me off just because I'm so used to the loquaciousness and, and smooth uh, transitions that Sebastian would provide during his hosting activities that uh, I almost forgot that it was burger day, which it's kind of a sin in my world. You don't want to miss that. And uh, you know what? I certainly didn't. One, it was something else. It's called the Dirty Joe. This is called Dirty Joe. And not that, but uh, they're now uh, going with a local bakery for these buns. And let me tell you, the buns are fantastic. I was, I was one of the test subjects that they oh. had today because... I'm a regular, obviously, if you couldn't tell by watching this channel. But the Dirty Joe is comprised of a single onion smashed patty, chipotle, aioli, chopped bacon, chopped ham, house queso, and topped off with hatch green chilies. All for the low, low price of fifteen ninety nine, And that comes with fries. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. You've gone plaid. I mean, as if excess is never enough. And this was excessive. And if you ever come to town, this is definitely one to try. You don't need any condiments on it. I mean, it's everything right there that you would possibly need. And the hash green chilies were nicely smoked and they and they brought that flavor in the chipotle aioli and the house queso. The house queso has actually got a little bit of spice to it, so it's not just American cheese melted and some afterthought of, of flavor added to it. No, this was this was fantastic. I can't complain. It was well worth my time, and now I I can't eat again until tomorrow, per usual. There may actually be the Intel RK five eighty being released, and Sparkle has, and this has been talked about for a long time, not with any kind of sense of excitement. Just a 50 is, you know, an adequate performer for the price. And the 770 is is now well under $300, even for the 16 gig versions. But yet they, they look to be releasing the A580, which is an even more cut down version. <laughs> uh, it's the who, ARC, who is ARC for? GPU. Look, there's who a is? huge market, untapped market out there for people who they look it's, at the A380. They look at 380 and they say, oh, it's just not enough power. But they look at the A750 and they say, that's ah, too much power. So the A580 may exist. Got eight gigs of memory. And it's a sub 200 watt part, I believe. Yeah, if that, that is the key. If, if it's cheap, if it's 150 bucks, say, yeah. then hey, great. 
Hey, and, uh, it's it's a good uh, what uh, Radeon RX five eighty replacement. Maybe. Is it? Well, we'll have to do some testing. No, probably not. I, I doubt is it. it is. It'll have newer API feature support, possibly. It's It'll true. have AV one. Uh, AV one. That's a big one. But yeah, external so, power. Oh, wait. Is there is that a an eight and a six? On this? Well, Sparkle tends to <sighs> overbuild their cars, and so we we yeah. probably couldn't take a whole lot out of that. Don't maybe even overbuild it in a way that makes sense, but what you get anyway moving right along as soon as i can pop something out so moving along in the graphics section uh, we have some new amd news the apparently the radeon 7000 series gpus are getting less expensive perhaps not cheaper but certainly less expensive uh with their red devil the XTX is now $899, and the XT is only $719. We have seen these prices just slowly eroding over the past year, and that's been good for end users. Uh, Power Color is, is a seemingly a popular brand. Among some enthusiasts, their cooling tends to look pretty good, but as you know, was noted by some rather heated Twitter arguments, uh, or X out spots sometimes are a little big, but anyway, uh, the price cuts are getting significant. Something that I think that, you know, AMD has, has needed to do. And especially going into this holiday season, um, yes. dropping those down. Uh, I mean, you know, cause the overall performance in, in raster, um, maybe not ray tracing, but of the XD and the XDX, is is right up there with the 480 and and the the 4080 and the 4090 in many instances. So uh, it's it's a nice deal for those looking for high end performance, plenty of memory, and uh, you know maybe pull 300 and some odd watts per GPU. Now, Josh, they do have what? ray tracing. Just they do have ray tracing, just not yeah. as performant. Oh, yeah. And no, um, yeah. I'm forced to admit something about this particular pricing that I just saw. And it's not about uh, my favorite operating system. It's about Micro Center. Micro Center's prices are actually slightly higher on these. I just checked before the show. Mm-hmm. I was surprised that they're still Please check your uh, above 1000 <laughs> Strange yet odd. Yeah. Yeah, it was very surprising and this to see the Micro not, Center uh, more than this. What? It's it's not just limited to the seventy nine hundred series. Uh, well, we saw it's not official, but the seventy seven hundred XD is now hitting uh, three uh, four nineteen ninety nine well four hundred twenty to four hundred thirty five dollars, uh, and that uh, four thirty five is the XFX that I uh, I reviewed that was released originally at four sixty nine to four seventy nine. So after two months. We've already seen the the seventy seven hundred XTs uh, drop mm-hmm. down. Uh, you know, twenty bucks at that level is you know it's what five percent. So you know five six percent and 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 it just keeps going a little lower. So it's nice to see AMD and its partners uh, kind of taking advantage of this because the sub $600 market right now is a little spicy and uh, it's getting interesting. The 4070, <coughs> excuse me, is dropping down into the lower 500s. The uh, 7800 XT is, is still holding strong, but 7700 XT is dropping. The 4060 Ti and the 4060 are dropping. Uh, under that, the 7600 can't get much lower <laughs> at, uh, what, 249 mm-hmm. And then the uh, the uh, the previous generation stuff <laughs> is still hanging around. And I saw a 6750 XT for 309 the other day. And that's a pretty dang stinking good deal. I mean, I would maybe pay 100 bucks more to get the 7700 because you get a few more bells and whistles and some performance there. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's a good time for the sub 600 level uh, of from what we previously were at in terms of MSRP and uh, yeah. availability and just the amount of different cards. 
that are out there. So it's it's a good time to be sub 600. As a wise Canadian once said, five bucks is five bucks. Mm-hmm. It sure is. And mm-hmm. we're getting back mm-hmm. to the separation we used to love where you've got a video card. Uh, it used to be at every like 10 or 20 bucks. And we did kind of complain about that because that's a little ridiculous. But having ones at the 50 to $80 mark where you, or occasionally a hundred where you can actually jump a nice level and still not be paying a grand or down south there, uh, 800 bucks or north. It's really nice to see. It's, it, it still hurts. It's like, hey, we all remember when the top of the line graphics cards were well under a thousand and we were making fun of the Titans. Those days yeah. are gone, but we are getting back to at least, you know, sort of reasonability. We did used to buy two of them. I don't have to do that anymore. So, exactly. Well, except you. Last one, I, I ran an SLI. It was I, I believe it was a 1070. And then for work, we actually Ooh. ran 2080 TIs in SLI because CUDA allowed the uh, the cards to kind of share yeah. their memory pools uh, fairly effectively when you've had but the... the scaling uh, the you saw for your applications was much better than for playing a game. Yes. The game, for games is, that, that, is, that is dead. That is so dead and gone. I mean, it saddens me a bit, but, you know, games are becoming so complex that they don't have time to, you know, I mean, they got to do major shader replacements. Uh, That's why your drivers are 700 megs in size, and uh, they just don't have the bandwidth to optimize a lot of titles for multi-GPU for, you know, what is minimal game gain anymore. But think of the gains what? you could get that you could gain uh, by having a separate card for ray tracing. If that was somehow possible, offload Gosh, that onto another GPU. That's just crazy. That's just that's no almost like ever physics. Done something similar to that. It's almost like physics. Phys- <laughs> you mean <laughs> physics? I mean, there's a glimmer of that when you look at the the multi core approach that yeah. AMD is taking. So I mean, yeah. it's not that it's can't be yeah. done. It just needs to be very tightly coupled. Just do what they did with the Crossfire X on the whatever series of cards it was that Josh has, where you had to have an external cable connecting the two. Oh, the X1900. Oh, yeah. 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 It, it, yeah. it actually is an FPGA, programmable FPGA. Yeah. That, that they, company they end up buying, um, actually. Made that, yeah. Right? How weird is that? It's so strange. Huh. It is before the train went off the rails. I was going to say that at 719, that's actually the first time that the 7900 XT has seemed like a, a viable option in the price point. It dropped $180. Um, so there's a much more substantial reason to look at it now. Before it was just $100 less than the XTX, and it didn't make sense to look at it when the XTX is out there for not much more. Um, but still the 6950 XT is 569 and you can still get those. So there's a couple of good options there in that, you know, upper mid price range. The fact that they I don't know how long go ahead. I was going to say the fact that they uh, relied so heavily on their previous generation uh, even after the launch of the 7000 series, because they just had the two high-end cards, they, they were actively promoting cards like the 6950 XT, mm-hmm. which is an outstanding card, and it's a fantastic value. And you look at that sitting out there under $600, it just seems insane to charge eight ninety nine for the 7900 XT. And the fact that it's selling for close to 700 now is great, but if you think about what, what it would be like if they had launched it at $699, it's like, hey, this is the same uh, price as, as a 3080 when it launched. But look at what the, we're giving you. Look at the performance. Look at the benefits. Even if they had sold it at $799 rather than $899, yeah. that, that would have made a much larger yes. impact. Because $200, that's a lot of money. 100 bucks for that performance, you just want to mm-hmm. go with the XTX. 100 but, sounds like a lot. If you're but, talking about a 200 versus a $300 graphics card, they're talking, you're talking yeah, 10%. But nine, 900. It's only 10%. Yeah, 900 versus 1,000. Yeah. yeah. But they still sold out in just about everywhere. So what's the difference it's, in price between a 7700 XT and a 7800 XT? 
10%. That's the problem. 449 versus 499. It's too close. 399 Not to 499. Anymore. 419. Well, right, because market corrections are happening. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. And and they should. But it's like, you know, with with AMD, I think that they gave their partners a little bit more leeway with some of these SKUs because one, the 7800 XT uh, was going to sell they they figured at that 499 price point, it was going to sell out. And they figured Probably, I mean, this is what I'm thinking is, you know, and we discussed this. I, I actually had discussed it on Moore's Law is Dead, is that if the 7800 XT is not available, this is a boon to guys like Micro Center and Best Buy because yeah. people go in saying, I'm going to go buy this video card and it's, you know, 500 bucks. Oh, they're sold out. Oh, but this upsell. one is kind of the same, but it's. $50 cheaper and it's actually available. You know, I know that it's not a great value, but I'm here at the store now and I might as well just buy it since I'm here because it's still going to be pretty good, right? Have you ever yeah. done that? I've I've done that. I did that with the Voodoo 2 8 meg. I went to Best Buy oh. thinking I was going to get a Voodoo 2 12 meg and they were sold out. And the value proposition of the 8 meg was not that great. But you know what? Oh. It was in stock. And I was down in Fort Collins, Colorado, 64 miles away from home. And I wanted a new 3D video card. <laughs> and guess what? Well, I technically, bought that's not bait and switch. That's impulse. So When I was yeah. coming along with GPU news, it appears that the Ro- mobile RD3 may be coming out this year with the RX 7900 M. It is an enthusiast class Navi 31, 72 compute units, 16 gigs. Of 16? Memory. You can't so even get that looks, on all standalone graphics cards, Josh. If this looks familiar. It sure may does. be the same RDNA 3 GPU that is powering the 7800 XT and the 7700 XT. Uh, it's still a chiplet technology, but it is tuned for mobile. Maybe one of the fastest mobile parts out when it is released, apparently, this year. The 7900M can be configured up to 200 watts. That's, uh, yeah, there's, that's a little spicy. There's a reason we haven't seen the mobile parts yet. It's excessive combined with the rest of the system at... Max Chooch, that just uh, seems like a little much for a battery-backed laptop. Yeah. Well, it's luggables. Well, and well, gaming luggables is the <laughs> so, category. Uh, okay. Luggables. So, uh, yeah, why not? Okay. And some of you may remember, but back in the day, in the uh, mid-90s, and going towards the late-90s, uh, these fly-by-night laptop manufacturers would often <laughs> put desktop chips in a mobile form factor and in fact i i knew a guy who bought a slot pentium 2 mobile thing i mean it, it had to they, they put it on three legs that were three inches because it needed that much ventilation underneath the laptop so this was truly one of those laptops that if you set it on your lap uh, you could go sterile and so Maybe we're we're going back there again. I don't know. The Asus Scorcher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so look at those puppies. Uh, they should be coming out this year. And, uh, you know, there's a whole wide range of them. Um, but, you know, 150 to 200 watt TDP in, in a mobile application is, uh, it is asking a bit much. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. Uh, Sebastian. Yeah. What exactly. Since we last podcasted, what well, least to Grand Fair. Well, Josh, I'm, I'm glad you asked because AMD's FSR 3 is now available. And how many games? Well, Forspoken, okay. uh, Immortals of Avium. It's a preview. It's a first look. It's uh, They're ramping up. I see what you did there. Ah, uh, ha, ha. But look uh, at 
Yeah. The, the joke is FSR three upscaling, but anyway. Yeah, right. and, mm-hmm. the, and frame generation. The, the obviously this is their answer to TLSS three. With frame, we have fluid motion frames. Full flow well, technology. That's which name is it? Fluid motion frames, optical flow. I, I don't. I'm lost here. It's uh, A F M F. And uh, what is it? Wait oh, that was a great band. Wait, so A <laughs> is for AMD. Okay, I just figured it out. Okay, AMD fluid motion frame. I don't like AFMF. I think DLSS no. sounds better. It does. AMF stands for another mm-hmm. maha. Huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Wait, what is the bowling? No, that's, that's, isn't that the bowling it's AMF. company? It's, it's AMF. That's, AMF? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Checking, yeah. This uh, flow chart here, or this uh, mm-hmm. topological examination of FSR three technology. Very exciting. This is okay, I've got to ask: is, is swap chain related to chain? It is, Josh, but it's a little bit looser. Chain for frames. No, this is. <laughs> yeah, but they're pretty loose. They swing a bit. Uh. Your frames are worth cool. only thirty percent what you originally paid for them. <laughs> Clearly, they're doing a lot of magic in the image output processing here in order to get what they call frame pacing, which I hope is an attempt to reduce the weird latency that you get when with frame generation. Maybe they're trying to solve that problem. Just look at the gains here. And for spoken, according well, to AMD, yeah. their card is only keep the XTX at 4K, ultra high, ray tracing enabled. Is barely playable only- at 58. Yeah, 58. Do I do I need to point out that when you cut out the game engine from actually producing the frames that you could have quite a lot more? That's yeah. the, that's the, that's the glory <laughs> that's of the these magic. upscaling technologies. Just render at a really low resolution <laughs> and then, you know, ask AI to step in and make it look less ass when it gets upscaled. That's yeah, all. but who cares where your cursor went? We're just going to make it up based on your last move of well, AI ago. is going to yeah. figure out where you should go in the game. So okay, yep. yeah, looks right. at what you know, Google it's just did. Be you watching a movie? Google you know was what? massively successful game. with Stadia, and they had this pioneering AI want... technology called predictive input or whatever it was, where yes. they mm-hmm. it was negative I... latency. That's what they called it. They were doing well, predictive it's totally different. The Switch game on rail experience, I want that brought to the PC. Yeah. Switch game on rail experience. Hey, it'll make me better PC. at games. It, mm-hmm. The AI, yeah. it, unless they, mm-hmm. they look at my typical performance and say, oh, well, he's going to mm-hmm. miss this shot and he's going to fall down here and he's going to die there. He's gonna we're jump going this in the way. Lava. And we're going this yeah. way. We're going to yeah. stop Don't here and the fight lava. the big bad and then we're going to go on this way. He's going to have a shot but forget to reload there. and Yeah. Mm-hmm. Does it for well, I mean, even anti-lag in that is designed to sort of cope with the, the frame generation or uh, whatever NVIDIA calls it. Rail game. In the NVIDIA control mm-hmm. panel, it's called a low latency mole mode, and then there's a, an ultra low latency mole mode. So, oh, but no. And- they were, Kent, they were selling us this whole thing where you bought the monitor that had their low latency and the graphics card that had it and the mouse that Reflex. had it. Yeah, thank you. Right. Reflex. Reflex. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, they had a whole ecosystem Sebastian, that sort of died up. You you might not have been stretching the truth so much when they came up with this phrase called motion to photon latency in regards to getting <laughs> AI involved. <laughs> so I'm moving faster than the speed of light? Because I'm pretty sure Apparently. I'm moving slower. And we already know where you're going, so we're going to motion to photon your intent and oh you succeed you made that now if they can only scale this up to a spaceship then yeah if only the universe is our doorstep (sighs) but the best thing about fsr3 is that it is not just amd uh people are doing testing and things like the gtx 1060 is able to do frame generation it's not recommended but it works, and uh, that's kind of interesting uh, from AMD in that they're putting this out there in there in in the ecosystem, and uh, people are are doing some interesting things. So uh, we're at the very beginning. Hopefully, it'll do well. I mean, 
their uh, what did their Vulcan API originally was called? Mantle. It, it was, was mantle. Yeah, yeah. It was mantle. Close to the metal. That's right. And it was mantle. Mantle. Close so, to the metal. Maybe we will see this be further developed, and uh, you know, become a basis for a whole series of games. I don't know. But uh, that's the good news. Do you want to know the bad news? Microsoft well, I mean, has so many hearts of people who don't want to pay for an OS. No more Windows 11 activations from Windows 7 or 8 key. So if you have dusty copies of Windows 7, Windows 8, which everybody pretty much does, you can yep. no longer use those keys to activate your fresh Windows 11 install. But what about no, Windows you're 10? Have to, I have no idea. Yes, Kent, you can. Kent, when you and recently downgraded from the, the modern state-of-the-art OS experience known as Windows 11 to Windows 10, did you use some like dusty Windows 7 or 8 key for that, or did you actually use a Windows 10 key? Or, or none of the above? Well, no, I went to uh, VIPSCDKey.com. Okay. <laughs> I was you know, say, you know, you, you, you know, how many times they have the offered to sponsor this show really regularly. Yes. I need to try. If it works, I need to, I need to know Kent. So I can, I get myself honestly, off I have been using them for probably four years, three, at least three, probably over four years. Um, and I've never had a key deactivate. Nice. And I've only had one where it wouldn't activate initially. I contacted customer support on chat, and I had a new key in five minutes. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, it, Let's see it, Microsoft it do that. Exactly. Yeah. No, I've got a so, seven key and a ten key, and I've been using them for, well, years. The seven key a little bit longer, obviously. But because it's Microsoft... If it's a stale version of Windows 11, like one of the first ones, you can still upgrade. If it's ah. Windows 10 so far, uh, NeoWin tried it, ours tried it, and they both worked. And then so you go the long way around and you upgrade to Windows 11, which always works out perfectly and never causes strange problems. Uh, but yeah, you, so this will eventually end. It just takes a while for Microsoft to sort of figure out what things are going. And mostly they honestly care more about the corporate customers than do about you and I doing this. So it had really upset some customers if, you know, some of their legacy keys suddenly stopped working because volume license key is just a, a nightmare to take care of. So, yeah, if the long story short is eventually, yeah, you're going to be uh, paying for a Windows 12 key. 12. Since Windows 10 was the finished, Windows 10 was the final version of Windows, right? Oh, yeah, that's correct. Yes, yes. Mm. Yeah. So you're saying Windows so, 11 doesn't exist? Well, no, no it it's does, just uh, not Windows. And don't worry, uh, operating system as a service will suddenly become a thing, and uh, we're it all will finally it. be the year of uh, the Penguin. Jeremy, I think this is just think a brand, branding issue. It's Windows 10.1. That's what we're running. It's just now. If they were smart, they would have said Windows 10 SE, and we'd all be in love. <laughs> yeah, they haven't done. We'd all be magically transported back to 1998. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. there are just more and more and more reasons to upgrade to Windows 11, isn't there? What I mean, I mean, it's so compelling now, especially with some of the latest editions just coming out of the beta for Windows 11, like this next minor story that we have. RGB oh, yeah, is. Minor. Yeah, it's there's that hot it's out of beta. That hot topic. What's have we used the buzzword yet this podcast? No, please do. What burning your eyes out with, with random light. Oh no, this is something actually LEDs. practical. I thought that you were saying that different it's it's the topic. way that, that Microsoft is adding more and more seamless integration with AI to be your digital assistant and you mispronounced change networks. everything. Okay, yeah. so uh, no software reason. as a service, AI-driven <laughs> OSs. This is not. Okay, this is RGB control software. Okay. Yes, it's out of beta. 
Be excited, everybody. Stop having to load up five or six different, well, whatever. No, at least three, probably. Different RGB control software with uh, with your Windows installation. It's like, oh, it, actually, I'm looking at Microsoft and Redmond as please save me here. Uh, and that is really weird. And I think a lot of people fall into that same category. Yeah. And no, I just with, downloaded with, one app from Baidu that runs it all. Okay, well, that's cool. I mean, if you got that going for you, this sounds like it's going to be great. And I hope it's it's a it's a like a gravity field for all of the makers of RGB controllable devices, and they start to create extensions and plug in for whatever Microsoft has got going in the standard Windows 11 installation. Unfortunately, this particular non-beta version from Microsoft only has like 20 different Razer pieces of hardware in it but it's a good start mm. at least um so i somewhere. applaud the direction they're going they're yeah open that by the api anyway. yeah that's it all right uh, you know what this has become far too depressing so let's let's talk about something fresh new snappy um exciting open rgb for those who, and and Is not only I? that but available this has promised is to be is it available, available? The RPi 5 has been announced. Faster, better, stronger. And they're saying... Doesn't cost a million dollars? You you could actually buy one. We're Jeremy. planning on having a huge supply of these. But it's faster, stronger, better, but it doesn't cost a million bucks. Well, a huge supply, supply of them that will end up in... around the world. Well, because, I mean, it's an A76 at 2.4 gigahertz. It's not... This is more than didn't double. Didn't they just what discuss uh, there was a big uh, there was a big uh, flaw in the A seventy six? Yes, it, maybe that's in security is. corner. Sorry, uh, go no, ahead. No, actually, think move along. Script that one. You, you get better storage, uh, so they've got a, a way of dealing with the the high speed SD cards. A single lane PCI Express two point Woohoo! Needs an adapter, but hey, it's a Raspi. You, you you kind of uh, sort of expect to have to deal with that sort of stuff. It looks ridiculous. There is a drawback. It's going to be sixty bucks for the four gig and eighty bucks for the eight gig. Uh, American will be significantly more up here, uh, and of course, it they don't provide cooling, which. You know, the register and a couple of other people are like poo poo. And it's like, no, you buy the extra kit for Raspi cooling because, you know, why Why would they ship it? They're just shipping you a, a little, what isn't even really a microcomputer anymore. It's a, it's a full on thing. It I, is important to note that without active cooling, this throttles yeah, very quickly. Don't. Even yeah. even with passive cooling, like a like a small heatsink on there, you're only going to get a few minutes of full performance out of this particular yeah. core, and it will throttle very very quickly within oh 15, very quickly. Minutes yeah, or so. you're going to actively so cool this. So it one. needs active it needs active cooling. Yeah. Uh, this and the the case the couple of cases and some heat sinks are designed with it. So it it looks like it's going to be actually a, a, a very reasonable pocket computer that Raspberry Pi is going to start competing in this size space again with a, their because they were so long between the 4 and the 5 and they had a lot of distribution or production uh, delivery problems for so long there were some other competitors that were able to step into this space with some very compelling products mm -hmm. but this kind of puts Raspberry Pi 5 back in play again so if you're into this sort of thing definitely take a look I mean, speaking of security corner, it's it's the most depressing 15 minutes <laughs> of our week. For an IT uh, professional, for all these things, bring us back down to earth about how unprofessional some of our colleagues are in letting these things go. But, you know, we all cannot be perfect in our designs, both software and hardware. And so this is why we need... Corner. Jeremy. We uh wise uh to file Zilla and I actually spent a good chunk of time finding ways to remove awful uh old FTP servers and occasionally clients, mostly focused on the servers, but the clients. 
and stripped them away. And I forgot that two people I've been working with for over almost three decades now still run a tiny little server, which they always use WSFTP with. So they were going through all of the programs on our corporate network and discovered that, no, there are two installs of WSFTP on there. And so we need to get rid of these. And who are they? Oh, oh my God, I know who these people are. And thankfully, they're just hitting a Linux box. It does. It's not running the server version, but it is running the client version. And so I'm like, okay, why are you? Oh, and then I looked into it and I looked into it. And at this point, you know what? You probably should just strip WSFTP off of your systems because there are 10 bugs of which one, and people have asked this before, does, does anything ever get a 10 out of 10 severity rating? Guess what? WSFTP server got a 10 out of 10 for unauthenticated you for it. attackers executing remote commands with just this one tiny little ad hoc transfer module that's a .NET program they upload to it with nothing else. And you've got full and utter control. Yeah, Community you, said, what is a 10? What is a 10? This WSFTP is a 10. WSFTP delivered. This no authentication is required a whatsoever. The, Nothing what makes it a 10 oh. is the traversal of systems and the traversal after you unauthenticated full access and traversal full. and easy escapism. That's what makes this one a perfect 10. Remember it. WSA Sleep well until delivers. we run into the 11 out of 10 because that will come <laughs> now. Because, yeah, oh, there's one more. My. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. This one goes to 11. Yeah. It's hmm. literally, even if you upgrade it at this point, no, they've scored a 10 out of 10. There are probably horrific things hiding that we don't know about. If you really like the old ones, go to win SCP or something. Otherwise go to FileZilla or another of the modern FTP programs. It's just, yeah, this is not good. Now, like my it. understanding is that WSFTP was actually a rather expensive proposition to continue to run, and you had to have actually a paid license to run this sort of thing. You'd think that the company kind of would have been like using that money to continue to improve and harden its server software, but apparently not. Didn't we have they a WinRAR vulnerability a little while ago? They just took the money. <laughs> You moved the headstones, but you didn't move the bodies. <laughs> Sorry, throwback. 1980 was a long time ago. It was. Yeah. Nobody knows what that means anymore. <laughs> oh, I know what it mm. means. I just. Oh, I do. It, it gave me nightmares. So, <laughs> uh, if you're not depressed enough, continue on because we're talking about vulnerability. Then, in fact, Potentially 250,000 men. So Jeremy, please let me know how terrible the world is again. The world is a scary place. A very scary place. This XM mail transfer, which, you know, thankfully not everyone uses. You know, there's just a quarter of a million servers on the planet that are running eh. this. So, hey, I mean, come on. Diddling them out. It's, and it's critical infrastructure, so, eh. They're also being, uh, one of the best things about critical infrastructures are being very transparent about it by not saying pretty much shite about what the fixes they're putting are. But yeah, some of them are, there's bugs that allow for remote code execution. And another two that do interesting things. Uh, essentially, the, the RCE is unknown. The first four that we know about are between 7.5 to a 9.8. And honestly, anything that's scoring above uh, a B is terrifying. There's some out of bounds stuff uh, where, you know, the usual, it's just because they've delivered mail, it doesn't have, necessarily have to get anywhere, but it can execute code just there. Uh, on, and, on top and of this uh, is this is in the authentication step. 
that, yes. that some of these remote code executions Sorry, right. are in the auth, the authentication step. So during the negotiation of a, a remote user attempting to authenticate to an XM server, they're actually able to cause remote code execution. What makes this especially, Jeremy, shady here is that uh, the crew that's behind the creation and maintenance of XM has patched three of the six vulnerabilities, but they've only posted them to private repos right now yeah. that they're slowly exposing to the um, distributors of the uh, Linux, uh, Ubuntu's, maybe uh, Red Hat, CentOS, you know, um, in, in several of them, they're slowly rolling that out. They haven't even addressed some of them. Really, this particular situation exposes uh, a, a nasty problem between ZDI and the XM crew, which ZDI is the one who found it. XM, of course, is the ones who are trying to fix it. They let this go for like 10 months. Um, when it was originally uh, told to them. And this is a really, really nasty situation. And it's 250,000 XM email servers, of which I have a couple myself. And I've gone in to look like, oh, can I get a patch for this? No, not yet. The problem is is that the the reverse engineered um, exploits for this have not been released. They've acknowledged that this exists but they haven't actually released what the problem is or the exploits for, or, or yeah. you know, reverse engineered the fixes because they're keeping the fixes in private repos at the moment, which is a credit because to them. security through obscurity works. Oh, for God's sakes. Yeah, um, but idiots. I'm like, I didn't know anything about this until I read it just uh, like earlier today. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to go patch these things. You can't get them yet because they have not released the patches for the three of the six that they've got. This is probably going to be pretty bad when they release the patches because there's going to be reverse engineered exploits. And quick hits. And this is very close to my heart. Close to my heart. So EA Sports, sadly, or I don't know. We haven't figured that out yet. Bought up, uh, they bought up Masters, who is the developer of the very popular Skoda. Grid and uh, Colin McRae Rally and Dirt Rally and the Dirt Series. Many fine racing games. In fact, they, they hold the FIA F1 racing license for games. And uh, so now they're, they're, they've taken over the WRC license, which is in my opinion, is a wonderful thing because the group that previously has been doing WRC uh, seriously were high all the time because your car was just floating constantly. It was terrible audio. Graphics were subpar. Handling was terrible. But they had the license Numb. And, and they could... Yes. No. Just Numb like, handling. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. yeah. It is bad. And if you could take a look at uh, Brett's... Uh, screen behind him he'll see that it is in fact a rallying car jumping it's i picked a volkswagen high. i picked a it's volkswagen i believe it's a mark yeah. i believe it's a mark five from the wrc hmm. nine i believe i see but anyway uh we 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 have uh yeah, this is available november 3rd you can pre-order it of course uh they have switched from the Ego engine, which was developed by Codemasters, and are now using the Unreal engine. I'm not sure which Smart. version. It may be four, maybe five, but they now have you know enough oomph to have 30 kilometer stages, and we got to see our first Ooh. real gameplay video of uh, it in action, and it looks pretty good. I think the graphics are a little dumbed down in the video compared to what we'll probably see on a high-end PC game. But it's at least going to be a little bit better than Dirt Rally 2.0, which I thought was nicely rendered, and their lighting in that is is quite good. Uh, Dirt 5 was disappointing. I mean, sure, you got some you know basic ray tracing and shadows and stuff in there, but I, I thought it looked horrible as compared. So... This is a nice step in a good direction with uh, using the Unreal Engine. And uh, yeah, it's going to be available. Pre-order November 1st. We'll get it unlocked. Well, three days early. Could be 
October 31st. Who knows? And then the uh, regular release, November 3rd. And I couldn't be happier because Dirt Rally 2.0 was released in 2019, four years ago. It's a long time. And I'm glad to have something new. And they will be updating it much more often because of the WRC license. Uh, yeah, it's going to be an extensive rework of essentially Dirt Rally 3.0, but with more goodies. Nice. Do you think I'm a coin flip with the new Unreal Tournament? Like, come on, what? we got a newer Unreal Engine. We need a new Unreal Tournament. Talk, talk to Tim closer. S. I, know. I don't want to. Josh, I'm mad at him. He just laid off Josh. all kinds of people. So yeah, he did. Not going to happen. I'm, yes, uh, I'm wondering if a coin flip a year or so ago kept them off of Unity. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no. Mm, gosh, no, Unity would not have been able to drive that. No. Next gaming quick hit story. And for some reason, I thought this was a PC podcast, PC perspective. I don't know. We're talking about the Nintendo Switch, Brett. You know, I think we're open to games being played on all the platforms. We talk occasionally about Sony. We talk occasionally about Xbox. Why Those are on x86. Well, well, I guess this is running an NVIDIA Tegra. It, so it is an NVIDIA Tegra. Elevated. And I, I think the Switch has moved into practically beloved territory. Well, that's okay. Hold on. This is not Look. Nintendo Life. This is not a <laughs> console gamer podcast i think i think many people have a soft spot for the switch apparently you I really do, do. I, I do i could not care less about the switch but my son loves it and my wife can't. it's arm powered man come on she just can't put it down. I, personally i am not an often switch player but i know people that are just like you that know people that love the switch so you may be interested to know that the switch has a little bit of life left on it of course it's up to they haven't lowered the <laughs> price 20 they haven't 20, lowered the price 25 and it's been like five years N- nintendo nintendo has the original diamond hands on this i've hands like there's nobody better than this nintendo diamond hands on the switch they're going to support this through march 31st 2025 with updates new games and continuing to sell at the same old price that we expect yeah and that's the, it. no price that's drop it. uh but full support full support well, i mean that's better than just tossing it out the window and saying yeah pity for you for buying our product and we don't care anymore that will not happen until after march 31st this is this is the problem with not having any competition really Beyond the Switch, for a modern portable game system, you have the... Uh, See, this the is why Steam the Steam Engage Deck. should have caught on. Steam Deck. This there, is why the Nokia Engage should have no, caught no, no. on. It no, would have no, been a strong... Okay, if we go that device. far back, we could say that they, the PlayStation had the PSP was very successful. The Vita was not very successful. Nintendo no, DS... No, the Vita was... Very successful. Super so Nintendo, successful. Nintendo just shot up to total dominance in the portable space and just never gave it up. You had... the. I the Rock Al- the Ally as well. Screen. The, those are niche products. They're talking about the mainstream. Every household it's, has a it's Switch the in switch. it. It's the Switch. It's Why the Switch. Why do you beat but me up Because there's no competition is my you, point. Why Sony, are you beating me up Sony does this? not have a portable right now. Period. They discontinued right. the Vita in like 2013 or something. They don't have a competitor to the Switch. Uh, Microsoft does not have a competitor to the Switch. And you have... Uh-huh. You know, these <laughs> tiny PCs with screens on them that are being sold by Steam and uh, like Valve, I should say. NVIDIA. And it, well, hey, don't forget NVIDIA's attempt. The, the shield that. doesn't exist shield. anymore either. That's a collector's item now. Flip up screen. It, it holds up tables in some places. You basically turned to say a quick bit on the continuing uh, support for the first version of the Switch into a rant. I applaud you on this. <laughs> I'm just saying, if, if Microsoft tomorrow came out with the Xbox Portable, Xbox Go, or whatever they want to call it, and, and it won't. played Fortnite, and it played all the latest games, and it kind of did what an ROG Ally or a Steam Deck would do, but it was Xbox branding, and it was two ninety nine, mm-hmm. it would be very successful. I think there's still there, a bit of there joy Nokia cons drift purchase. on that? Do oh, the, but hey, they Brett, all, drift? All, all controllers drift. There's, there's just physics. No, right? it's not Nintendo's they fault. They don't. 
They don't. The magnetic fault. ones. Yeah. The magnetic ones. Are but better. Josh likes it because it helps him drift when he's playing uh, dirt. Or no, he uh, doesn't like it because that game was specifically tailor made for controller input and not steering. Oh input. yeah, no, that's just awful. Dirt Five, it, it just sucks. Let's just say it. It sucks. It looks like yeah. crap. It looks like a PlayStation yeah. early PlayStation Four game. Yeah. Even when Terrible you turn on physics. all the eye candy all the way up to the to the highest, it's amazing how yeah. not impressive it looks. Side side comment: Have you ever had one of the younger folks sit in front of your gaming PC and ask where the controller was? Because that just happened no, to me David, recently, and I, don't I felt like I felt like vaguely offended by that. I'm like, no, I, use a keyboard. I and mouse. raised my son on <laughs> DOS and Windows 98. When he was little, I have video of him playing education. child abuse. Edu- educational Testify. software. He learned how to use a mouse before he could talk. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he Correct. knew how to play it's lemmings. You, you let him people. smoke in your house? Not in the house. I make him go on the back <laughs> patio <laughs> for that. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. you know I'm what? Like a, a, a game controller. Along. I mean, like, get out. <laughs> I know. Yeah, get out of my house. Oh. You're on your own. <laughs> Along, <clears throat> I Another hate when you story. install it's on. This, you install? What the hell does it mean? This is Kent again. No, it is not. You mean Brett? Oh, no, I'm shocked. <laughs> Bront. Wait, it's is Bront. this a Flash game? A good this game, like a Bront. Game. It is not a Flash game. Is this on Switch? Is this made in when Unity? I- <laughs> When I stumbled across this, I'm like, is this for real? Basically, what Microsoft has allowed you to do during long sessions of Windows 11 installation. What, like updates? Right. Yeah, whatever. Banish the tedium of setting up Windows with a built-in, quote-unquote, while you wait, game of surf. <laughs> are, you, <laughs> are you kidding me? I'm like, wait, so I'm you- like, I hope... I hope this catches on during long OS installations that you could be. Why don't you play this game? Why don't you play this game? This is this is for real. No. (laughs) Oh my god! You got to see this. I've got Edge. uh, Worst timeline ever. He's yep. Sebastian's trying it. There is a quick. There is. There's a quick way to get this inside Edge. Okay. I, Ooh, let's start. Let's let's oh, look, space bar. <laughs> space bar. So all you got to do is just avoid stuff. It's touch, touch sensitive. It's mouse. It's keyboard. It's okay. it's uh it's uh, gaze sensitive. It's what you know, sensitive? It, it, yeti it tracks your eyes. eyes. Gaze. It tracks yeah, your I was gonna eyes. Say, where's the yeti? Gaze. It, yeah, it tracks. There needs everything. to be a yeti. <laughs> oh, you got slowed down. You know, meanwhile, Windows is installing in the background. Isn't this much better than watching paint dry? It's way better. No, I want to see you crash. There you go. <laughs> yeah, well, there you we go. got your wish, Josh. All right, Edge Surf, play it today mm-hmm. while oh your Windows God, updates are installed. Wow. You know, Microsoft has a long history of those entertainment packs and you know little desktop games you're not to talking play about when you're being you? paid to do other work. And then you just put your somebody other from over YouTube it. chat just says I've added that to my school's fire wall block. <laughs> Smart man, but it's local. You can't it's, block you a can't, local. You can't yeah, I bet you system. can't. It's Edge. You can't surf. It's built into the latest version of Edge, and you, you don't can't want to be signal GPO. You don't want it to be running an insecure system. Uh, so I'll continue. Is it is anyway. it time for reviews you know, corner? You know what? We actually have something strange. Hmm? We have tangential reviews, and two of them by two different authors. Tangential, and I'm, I guess they are loosely connected, aren't they? They are. They are. They are. They are. Uh, yeah, one of us has if, better. If you like than portable the other. storage, and you cannot lie, sure. the right place. Will you tell us about the X9 Pro and X10 Pro portable SSDs from the perspective right. of somebody who does not have a 20 gigabit port on their motherboard? Because that's true. Neither of the uh, places that I tested could actually do the uh, USB 3.2 2 by 2 So, I mean, it's all just Gen 2. It's not 2 by 2 But one of uh, the strangest things I did about this review was trying to figure out how to ex- describe just how small these bloody things are. <laughs> and so I have a deck of cards. And then I realized maybe people don't know what cards are anymore. Ah. Uh... 
you go. The, the two of them together are barely as tall oh. as a Are these Global foundries. foundries playing cards? Hey, I, uh, I've, yeah, got, I've got very, that uh, behind me. Yeah, but these things are tiny. Like, eyeglass tiny. That is that is ridiculously small. That is Wow. Yeah, they are stupidly small. <laughs> and I love them. Because they're dense, uh, shiny on the top. Are, are you saying that they're rubber on not the very smart? Oh, well, Ooh. I mean, that's... This is, this is, that's this nice is SK Hynix. And that's is what I'm working on. Yeah, so apparently this was the mine. the storage, the summer of of storage. Mm-hmm. Yep. But not to interrupt you, go right ahead, Jeremy. You get the nice little pigtail on them, <laughs> but this is the uh, X9 Pro, so two terabytes, which caps out, uh, you know, uh, USB two point or USB three point two speed so and, and it did it, it capped out quite happily at what you'd expect which is you know a thousand megabits a second for x10 in by two and sadly i didn't have anything that could properly read but it did do slightly better and it did because we all know that amd and intel boards have uh different ways of dealing with usb both cases, these were absolutely solid. One of the tests that I did was uh, a Windows image of about five gigs, copied it across, in fact, nicely compressed. It, you know, hit a perfectly solid speed uh, between uh, five to, I think the, the peak was about 670 on one of the tests. Also threw it a random folder of just executables, email saved from Outlook, <clears throat> uh, zipped files the xm binaries yeah so you know just two gigabytes worth of general crap and a little bit of more problem with that because well i mean it that is truly random rights right there it's not sequential but they really really did a good job and the thing that i love about them thumb dives are great they're easy to lose they're easy to forget you've got plugged into a USB port and they ruin the USB port. And frankly, they just collect a lot of dust because yeah, it came with a cap. Do you still have that cap? No, you don't. You don't. So something a little more rugged like this, it, it makes a lot of sense. And I mean, it might be a little bit old, but two terabytes in this tiny little thing is just laughable. It, it's it's so fun to actually have, and the the prices, hey, they're not actually bad. <clears throat> the I don't know if the sale is still going on, but uh, when I grab them, the X nine, which is usually one hundred and sixty, is on for one hundred and thirty. Okay, that's not too bad. The X ten, if you have the two by two port to do it, usually two hundred and ten, one hundred and seventy. And that means the difference between 4K 60 frames per second and 4K 120 frames per second. If you can support it, that's a pretty stupidly good deal for two gigs or for two terabytes. If you can keep your iPhone 15 from bursting into flames, it makes a great exterior drive or external drive for yeah. long format 4K recording. No, yeah. I, I wouldn't play Starfield off of it. Uh, it, mm. it gets a little bit upset, but it's probably better than a hard drive. So don't <laughs> use it as a portable game drive. But if you it, and the other thing is that uh, it comes with, sorry, I forgot, a uh, crucial storage executive, which only some of it can work because it's external, not internal. Uh, a free month of Adobe CC, if you want to try it, a Cronus backup, and a couple of other uh, just sort of random programs that, uh, or storage related that it comes with. So it's, you know, they, they, Crucial did a good job on these. It's a really nice form factor. And forgot to mention, keychain hole. They perform well. And uh, I'd love to see if I uh, could actually get a system that would get the full speed out of the other one. That's the big the form. Go ahead. 
The form factor is interesting because, as you pointed out, that somewhere between the USB sort of gumstick size and the size of a, an encapsulated uh, typical SSD comes these, which is difficult to misplace or lose. And I'm sort of a little bit surprised that they give you the option of turning it into a, a keychain. <laughs> Josh is saying, oh, no, there are other the, ways. Envy, there are, there are other ways. ways. Yeah. Oh, and it's but, also uh, uh, IP55. Oh, so you can drop it in the water. You can throw this in a lake and get it back, and it'll still work. Nice. Hmm. But we we didn't stop there. We didn't stop at one no. portable since everybody's yeah. getting sampled portable drives these days. So why yes, not look at another one? Thing. Samsung has their answer to that crucial drive, and is Gen. Two by two. And I was ready and willing to test it at 20 gigabit per second speeds. This just in 20 gigabits per second is faster than 10 gigabits per second. I'm sorry. That's it. Pause. Let me do the math on that. Over. No, you can't argue with that. That's just math. Okay. All right. Now, portable SSD T9. This does 2,000 megabytes per second on sequential reads. Look at the extra. We're talking about this textured. uh, rubbery finish on it it's almost fabric like from this rubbery view. and ridged mm. it's uh moist you can still get your hand around it it's not going to slip out it's not like a bar of soap situation <sighs> it's it's easy to grab it's easy to hold on to rugged not that most solid state storage isn't rugged you can drop it from 9.6 feet they say yes and but it's it, ip it what again not. ip rated I don't think th- I don't remember what this one is as far as the IP rating is concerned. Yeah, I think that's important to know whether you could take it into the shower with you. And it doesn't have a keychain hole. This is a little bit bigger form factor than the tiny X9 and X10. But you're getting the ruggedized <laughs> exterior. This is very similar to the T9 uh T7 actually that they released previously. <laughs> the T7 Shield and also offers full drive encryption just like that T7 Shield did and you can run the little software program that's on a encrypted partition of what system you uh, plug this thing into. Once you have run portable SSD software, you can put your password, unlock the byte partition and access. It came pre-formatted with XFAT. And by the way, I did reformat it later with NTFS and it reduced performance. So just don't do that. Uh, And I ran a crystal disk mark benchmark with the peak performance preset it was getting over 2000 wow. megabytes per second reads this is queued up nice 100,000 iops very fast plus this or minus very IOPS. fast drive what in what wow. intel board was this what intel board were you on i was not on an intel board at all brett i'm impressed i was I, on i where is i reserve it? my snarky msi x670 e ace motherboard with the latest that you said it's 107 so i, I guess I, the latest i'm s- I'm sufficiently cowed at this wow. point. Thank you. So, yeah, AMD on uh, AM5, now that it has reached a GSA maturity, is an excellent platform. This A lot of these boards are going to have a 20 gigabit per second port, at least the high-end boards. And Well, you're going to have to retest it after the next uh, GSA comes out. <laughs> no, no, please. <laughs> uh, so you see, right <laughs> no. speed's a little bit below the 1950 Seriously. they advertise. Impressive. But still, look at these numbers. Impressive this, for you know, AMD. Well, no, that's, yeah. that's an external drive, boys and girls. Okay. That's here, not internal. Nice. Nothing, nice. Is, nothing is perfect, and there does seem to be some caching here, because once I reached the 80 gigabyte mark. And here's what I did. I took a folder that had my offline cyberpunk files from GOG. Uh, Every version I've tried to archive for, you know, my own purposes. So I could run in the privacy of your own home, of course, in the privacy of my own home. I do weird things like download, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the offline installers from GOG. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. cyberpunk Mm -hmm. version 1.63, I was transferring over and this is 107 gigabytes. The 75-ish percent mark, which is 80 gigabytes, it slowed down considerably. It went from about 1.6 yep. to 1.7 gigabytes down to 912-ish. And this happens uh, again. Let's see. Actually, oddly enough, slow down again at the 75% mark. So Do you it, think how it's many heat? times did it take you to capture that picture, by the way? Because I, th- I spent a stupid amount of time trying to get a 
good capture uh, once. I oh, I thought I got ninety one on both. I missed it. I got ninety on this one and ninety one percent on that one. Anyway, do you, do you think it's heat or thermal related? Uh, Possibly. Uh, the they they had advertised that this was something that would work <laughs> through. What did they say here? Let me go to their their marketing quote, the manufacturer description section. And likes to be hot, so it's got to be the controller. The T9 portable SSD performs at high speeds even during longer processes for high performers like you. It says. <laughs> so mm. uh, How apparently know high performers up mm. to 80 gigabytes. Because once you exceed that, you're not just a high performer. You're an elite performer. So you need a different solution to prevent any kind of throttling. This is perfectly fine. Who is transferring 107 gigabytes at a time to and from the drive? You know, if you have well, apparently one of us one twenty video files, <laughs> then you easily get into that territory. But if you just look at the the performance capability here, and it's unrealistic to have a Q depth of eight for a sequential file transfer in Windows. Um, I wish I wish Windows, I wish was, Windows was more SSD more optimized. SSD optimized. It'd be great. Really and so, know. is that I'm not Alan. I don't know if Windows handles random four K reads and writes at the Q depth of thirty two or not. I mean, what do you mean by handle? I don't know what I mean. It, it will cope with them. It won't like it. So the one drawback to this device, which is very nicely designed, very durable, extremely fast, is pricing. You're going to pay a premium opening like that Crucial X10 Pro, which is selling for 169 This is 239 for the same capacity, 2 terabytes. Oh. So you're, it's not crazy well, expensive. Well, to be fair, Sebastian... It's on sale right now. Usually it's two ten. So a twenty dollar difference or a thirty dollar difference, no. That's that's and, not huge. and these are list prices. I haven't seen street yeah. prices on places like Amazon and B and H photo yet, but Yeah, uh, X ten list is two ten. Okay. So that's so, not so bad. And they do offer a four terabyte, it is four thirty nine ninety nine. It seems a little high, but I mean, you're getting what mm-hmm. is probably the fastest. I will be testing. I have an X10 Pro here. Put it through <clears> its paces <throat> at two by two and compare these two against each other and see. But that random performance, if nothing else, is, is super impressive on this Samsung drive. So it may be worth it to you if you need if that kind of speed. If you have a 20 gigabit port and you just, you're curious yeah. about it, what, what does this do? Get a drive like this. It will just blow you away. <clears throat> At least in synthetic benchmarks and other stuff. Well, no, but not just synthetic. I mean, if you do record video and you need to dump it externally, this is it. If you are an Adobe person and you filled up your drive and you need, I need a spare. Can anyone spare two terabytes for the storage? Boom. There you go. And you can copy it over in a reasonable amount of time. Yes, it is. I- it is that time, Hit it. and sometimes I I sit here and I forget that I'm not the host, but I am the host. You are. So here we are. We're we're with our, our, our quick quick picks, and uh, this is one that I actually finished up reviewing late last week, and it's the the Loop Deck Live S. It's it's a stream Ooh. deck that is sub two hundred dollars. I think it you know MSRP is one ninety nine. You can get it for one eighty nine. Sometimes it gets on sale for one seventy nine. It's you know touch sensitive, um, LED programmable buttons, knobs, all kinds of things. Fifteen buttons on the front. You've got those four other LED buttons that take you a di- to a different screen, and so uh, it is a uh, it's connected by USB three point uh, They were recently bought out by Logitech, and uh, Again, probably later uh, this week or next, you'll you'll see the full review that I'm doing, and and Sebastian has one in hand as well. I don't know if he's using it tonight, but uh, I guess we'll find out soon. Maybe I don't know, but uh, really handy. You can put widgets on it. I've got weather running time. Uh, you can you can develop your own little apps. It's keyboard shortcuts. It's really easy to program. Create your own little icons. Um, it's just a fun little thing for not a whole lot of money, and uh, it's going to turn me into a Twitch maven. You're going to hear me do uh, sound effects. Did you hear that? Like AM radio sound effects? I'm sorry, we did not. 
I no, we heard nothing. Okay, well, I've got to actually go through OBS to be able to hear that. But but you can actually, you know, program in sound effects. So I, I did boom, which... The new again, Howard I'm Stern, ladies with and gentlemen. And other. Oh, it's it's the, the power Howard at my Stern. fingertips. It is It is truly... Josh, I think people name? are looking for looking t- for you to enhance your twitch game streams so this well it's only like been a year and a half vehicle. since i last did yeah. one so i hear hot yeah. tubs are a good way to uh increase yeah well all while we're a g-string get get the no, speedo it's a out, bathrobe, get out some cheese. i don't think it's bathrobe. loud i don't think it's loud on twitch anymore actually hmm. yeah, they remain need to wear a bathrobe they've become the weirdly rules t- mongers gaming Weird. Oh, I strange. thought we'd already talked about the Josh <clears throat> Tech Only Fans channel and uh um, we did some we're advertising too much, it. Josh. This, this, we're this, advertising this, it. It's a we didn't want to advert. I don't know. Yeah. Jeremy, move us along. Building up that anticipation. Oh, you know how I love to make fun of large language models. Because yes, they are gonna save us all from a problem we don't actually have. Well, no, a lot of people have trouble typing into search engines, so maybe being able to talk to them in native language is, is a good thing. But uh, this is a, a blog that I follow called Language Log. It's a bunch of linguists. And they're, they're bringing up the reversal curse, which you may have not have heard of. The thing is that when you're playing with chat GPT, and this includes 3.5 and 4, uh, as well as uh, the other one, the reversal curse is now a, uh, a, a an actual academic uh, discovery. If you feed ChatGPT something like Uriah Hawthorne is a composer of abyssal melodies, this is made up, doesn't exist, and you talk to them about about how Uriah Hawthorne is great and how abyssal melodies is great, and then you ask them chat gpt who composed abyssal melodies it doesn't know and he's gone they they did this number of times and it'd be about 33 percent so not even flip a coin accurate because the thing is that large language models you can train them that a equals b that does not mean they grasp what B is A. Look into this if you're you're trusting uh, AI to uh, handle things for you. There are some. This is not general AI. It's very specific, and it's honestly a glorified uh, search engine. But it's just lovely. Like even stuff as simple as it, what it can search for. Who is Tom Cruise's mother? Mary Lee Pfeiffer. Got about 79% on that. Who is Mary Lee Pfeiffer's son? GPT-4 gets Tom Cruise 33% of the time. There's a GitHub uh, code available at the link if you want to play with it, because, I mean, we do kind of have to torture these things. People think they're so amazing, and they're at some things... But they're not general. It, it's that's a pretty interesting article yes. by a group of cunning linguists, Jerry. Yeah. Uh, Brett, and Brett, let's let's move along. Brett, I'm what sorry. Is your pick? I only res- I only respond to the name Bront from this book. Okay, Bront. <laughs> they're good CPUs, right. Bront. This is a straight up CPU pick. I didn't go for something a little bit off the wall, a little bit odd. I just went straight up the middle and right at the AMD fanboys with this one. The 7800X3D is available at a reasonable price. Currently at Newegg, $399 with a $50 off promo, potentially $349 for that powerhouse. <laughs> can I combo this up? Are you telling me I can yes, get you maybe some can. RAM with this? Oh my gosh. It was on yes. Shell Shocker for $338 or something like that. It was it was nuts. Well, that's that's damn impressive. But three forty nine yeah. at a at a uh, standard, you know, new egg style, really new egg here in this case. 
retailer is a damn good deal. And if you're looking that for is... some AMD hot gaming, I'm not, and I mean that in the best way possible, you should go get one of these. I know that's only like $20 more expensive than the 5800X3D. And you get yeah. a lot more beef with the 7800X3D. Yeah, let's yeah, talk a, PCIe 5. Deal. Let's. Yeah. Or, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Sebastian, uh, anyway. do you have a uh, an invisible pick today? Uh, no, I'm just going to skip myself this week. I'm it's under construction. Plywood? My pick this That's week okay. is... I skipped uh, myself earlier this week, and never mind. My pick this week is... Uh, it's made in the United States of America. I'm very proud to be an American who uses APA rated sheathing. It's 2416, size for spacing. It wall, and I'm going to be uh, reinforcing it and putting uh, some kind of... I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. Sound panels. I'm going to move everything around and actually add some depth and not look like I'm sitting in a dark corner. Hmm. Anymore, even though you still are. I am, but I'm, I'm not going to be. I'm going to do. I'm going to do things. Yeah. I'm, going to, I'm going to make this look. Into YouTube chat is asking, "Is this covering the copper pipe?" And the answer is freaking my, no. My plan Watcher. was to uh, cover the copper pipe. No, and I was going no, to. No, it's all going to be copper pipe. Corner around it, and I just said, "No, I'll just move to the other side." And for various logistical reasons, I couldn't move to the other side of the room. So I just decided to put up a fake wall. Behind this wall is my um, hoarding uh, stash of old computer stuff on a growing collection of plastic put together shelving from uh, the local hardware store. So I just, just I, out of sight, out of mind. It's behind this All right, fake great, wall now. Great, great pick. Great pick. Yep. I think Kent. we should do a copper pipe segment. Sorry, go ahead, Ken. So, you know, much like Brett, I'm I'm going for a CPU as well, but you know, I'm I'm not going for the that filthy communist red. I'm going for glorious <laughs> American team blue. Um because right now you can get a 12600K 249 with a $70 off coupon. So 180 bucks will get you a fantastic gaming processor. Uh, I actually have one of these in my wife's PC. It's really easy to cool, and you can overclock it to over 5 gigahertz very easily. And for gaming, it's fantastic. It'll give you 99% of the performance of even the best gaming processors out there. Um you can still use it with DDR4. You can combine this with a motherboard and RAM and have a almost complete system for a really reasonable price, which is something we can't say very often these days. So I think that's a that's a great uh, buy at 180. 180 for a CPU. Boy, the days <laughs> that we live in. <sighs> Some days you just gotta you gotta look at the there little copper pipe. Some days that you day just today. gotta you just have to gaze upon the copper pipe. Yeah, you, a lot of work it in is that. Immense take it all in and unique. Take it in. Just yeah, and it's it's, it's it has a grounding pipe. effect. Taking that pipe. Hmm. <sighs> Getting a lot of traction off of that pipe joke. I mean, oh, just a little. You know what? It's um, it's uh, yeah. I'm gonna. I feel like it's gonna be a lot of. I'm gonna richly mine that one. Yeah. Uh I mean, you know, it's not a copper pipe. It's a copper pipe. We have we have surpassed the midnight hour for Sebastian, and this is the point that he turns he turns into a pumpkin, which. As you can no, tell he by the turned into pipe, a copper pipe. <laughs> he did not turn into a copper pipe. It was a pumpkin, and I, I, I'm sure the tendrils are uh, are controlling the cameras as we speak. And he wishes not to be seen. And at this point, I too wish not to be seen because it is late. We have talked seemingly ad nauseum, and I'm sure that all of you viewers and listeners would like to stop the pain. And so we will. <laughs>